we were looking at a lot of uh, at, uh, some abstract variational problems. Now we will see uh, several examples of applications of uh, the general uh, result, especially the lax welcome lemma. So, uh, examples of boundary value problems. So, we first look at the Dirichlet problem. for second order elliptic equation operators. So, throughout whether I say it or not omega in Rn is a bounded domain and gamma will denote d omega ok. So, this is the uh, thing. So, we consider the problem minus Laplacian u equals f in omega u equal to 0 on gamma. So, this is a problem Lap delta is a Laplacian and f is some given data. So, in the domain it should satisfy this differential equation and on the boundary it should vanish. So, f from omega to r given function. So, classical solution means u in C2 of omega bar u equal to 0 on gamma and omega f in c of omega bar and my minus laplace in u equals f point wise in omega ok. So, this is what we would look at a classical solution. So, if u is a classical solution let us multiply this by a c infinity function with compact support. So, let phi belong to d of omega. So, you have minus laplace in u into phi equals f of phi and then we integrate it over omega. So, now let us uh, say use Green's theorem. So, you get uh, integral on omega grad u dot grad phi then there is no boundary term because phi is in d omega and therefore there will be no boundary term equals integral omega f phi dx ok. So, this is what we get when we uh, satisfy this ok. So, then uh, so, so u is in C2 of omega bar f is in uh, so therefore it implies that and uh, u equals 0 on gamma and therefore this implies that u belongs to h1 0 of omega and then f is in C of omega bar and therefore this implies that f is in L2 of omega ok. So, now if you look at star by since d omega dense in h1 0 of omega by continuity and density we have star valid for all v phi in h1 phi in h1 0 omega not just this, ok because of the density something. This we call as the weak formulation. So, we have weak formulation find u in h1 0 of omega such that for every v in h1 0 of omega we have integral on omega grad u dot grad v dx equals integral on omega f v dx ok. So, there is nothing 
about the second derivative in uh, even though the given differential equation is a uh, is called the uh, is a second order differential equation namely the it is for the Laplace operator this equation does not involve anything about second derivatives we are looking at a function on which uh, the vector space uh, involves only function and its first distribution derivatives and the formulation here also the equation which we have written for every v in h10 omega does not involve involve any second derivatives at all ok. So, that is why we call this a weak formulation. So, we, we say that this is a solution a weak solution of the original equation. So, first let us dispose of the question of existence. So, existence of weak solution So, H10 of omega is a Hilbert space. Fv going to integral on omega Fv dx. So, mod integral Fv dx is less than or equal to mod F0 omega mod V0 omega and by Poincare's inequality this is less than C times mod F0 omega mod V 1 omega and therefore, this is a continuous linear functional on this thing and you have that a of u v equals integral grad u grad v on omega. So, mod a u v is less than or equal to mod u 1 omega mod v 1 omega and you have that a v v equals integral mod grad v square and that is of course, mod v square 1 omega which is a norm on so mod 1 omega norm on h10 of omega because omega is bounded and we have Poincare's inequality. So, we have the solution so by lax milgram so we have a continuous symmetric and elliptic bilinear form and a linear functional on the other side therefore, by lax milgram there exists a unique u satisfying double star. Okay. So, there exists a unique solution further because by symmetry of the bilinear form we have that u equals uh, uh, j u equals minimum over all v in h10 of omega of j v where j v equals one half integral on omega mod grad v square minus integral f v omega ok. So, this is the thing. Now, remark we can also have f in h minus 1 of omega and then instead of integral f v omega this will be replaced by the duality bracket f in h minus 1 h 1 0 ok. So, the in, in, that is the only change otherwise this will have uh, a solution. So, we have the following we have proved the following theorem omega in R n bounded open set. gamma equals d omega f in L 2 of omega then there exists a unique weak solution uh, u in h 1 0 of omega uh, further u minimizes j over h 1 0 of omega ok. So, this is the theorem. So, now let us see how the weak solution is connected to the original equation ok. So, suppose we have so we have grad u grad phi equals f phi for every phi in d omega for instance, but this tells you that minus Laplace in u acting on phi equals f phi 
as distributions and therefore this implies that minus Laplacian u equals f in d prime omega. So, the weak solution is connected to the original differential equation namely it satisfies the differential equation in the sense of distributions. Now, so assume now u belongs to h1 0 omega intersection c2 of omega bar then f will belong to c of omega bar okay and minus laplace in u f belong to l2 of omega okay because it is in h u is in h2 and also u is in h2 of omega okay and therefore you have and they are equal uh, as functions and d omega is dense in l2 of omega this implies that minus laplace in u equals f in l2 of omega that means minus laplace in u equals f almost everywhere but they are continuous functions and so minus laplace in u equals f further u restricted to gamma equal to 0 okay so therefore you have that uh, it is a classical solution therefore weak solution plus smoothness implies classical solution So, the question is when do you have the smoothness? So, this is guaranteed by means of what is called a regularity theorem. So, we have to prove it each time. Okay? So, for given any problem, you have a weak solution, weak formulation, we have weak solution. Then, by some other technique, you have to show that it is a regularity theorem. Now, for the record, we will say, for instance, that if omega is a smooth domain how smooth i am not specifying let us say reasonably smooth then and u is in h10 omega weak solution f in l2 of omega this will imply that u belongs to h2 omega intersection h10 of omega if u belongs to hm uh, sorry f belongs to hm of omega this will imply that u belongs to hm plus 2 omega intersection h10 of omega these are examples of regularity theorems for the laplace operator with reasonably smooth domains and therefore if you m is large enough then of course with the sobolev in embedding theorems you can deduce the au is differentiable uh, so uh, as many times as you want and then you can deduce that it is a classical solution so this is how we go so the regularity theorem needs to be proved it's it's not an obvious thing and that is a different story so, now let us look at the inhomogeneous Dirichlet problem. Dirichlet problem means you are prescribing the value of the function on the boundary. Okay? This is called a Dirichlet problem and therefore homogeneous means u equal to 0 on the boundary. Inhomogeneous means you have some other function. So, f from omega to r g from gamma to r given and we want to look at the problem minus laplace in u equals f in omega and u equal to g on gamma okay so this is called a inhomogeneous dirichlet problem so as usual if you multiply by uh, phi in d omega you get grad u dot grad phi equals f phi for every phi in d omega. 
because again we used uh, integration by parts and there was no boundary term because phi is 0 on the boundary. So, we are trying to look for, so we look for u in h1 of omega so that these integrals make sense ok and this will imply of course that gamma naught u will have to belong to h half of gamma ok that is the trace theorem which we have proved. So therefore we assume so assume g belongs to h half of gamma only then we can try to make sense of the weak solution ok. So now let so you have what you have from h1 of omega gamma naught to h half of gamma this is a continuous and on to. So when you have on to from a Hilbert space then always you know that there exists a right inverse. So there exists a right inverse. from h half of gamma to uh, h1 of omega that is given g in h half of gamma there exists a u tilde in h1 of omega and that is the right inverse that means u tilde gamma naught of u tilde equals such that and further you can say norm of u tilde in h1 of omega will be less than equal to some c times norm g in h half gamma ok. So, this uh, uh, is the lifting you can always have because you have uh, we are in Hilbert spaces and we have right inverse. So, now you define k to be equal to u tilde plus h10 of omega. So, this is set of all v in h1 of omega such that v equal to g on gamma ok or in other words if you do not so v minus u tilde is in h1 0 of omega and this will imply that v gamma naught v equal to gamma naught g u tilde equal to g. So, v will be equal to g on the boundary. Then k is a closed affine subspace of h1 of omega. So, it is closed convex. So, it implies closed convex. And we want u belong, we are look for u belonging to k. And we have that integral grad u grad v e dx equals integral uh, f v for every v in h10 of omega. So, we call this the weak formulation. So, as usual, so we arrived at it starting with the solution of the equation and we can again check this obviously means. So, if you have a weak solution, this obviously means that minus Laplace in u equals f in d prime omega as before and since we have u gamma naught u equal to g on uh, implies u equal to g on gamma ok. So, we have that the weak solution satisfies the differential equation in the sense of distributions and of course, it satisfies the boundary condition also and therefore, this is a called a weak formulation of the equation. Now, what about the existence of the solution for this weak solution? So, for that we look at uh, u, we write it as w plus u tilde where w belongs to h10 of omega. So, this will imply of course, that gamma naught of u equals gamma naught of u tilde which is equal to g 
okay and then if you substitute it in the fo formulation above so that will give you grad w so w in h10 of omega such that grad w grad b okay plus equal to uh, dx equal to integral on omega fv dx minus integral on omega grad u tilde grad b dx for every v in h10 of omega. So now you have completely a problem in h10 of omega. So we have uh, with Hilbert space and of course a u v is equal to integral on omega grad w grad b which we know uh, grad u grad b which we know is an elliptic symmetric uh, continuous bilinear form it is in fact just the inner product in h10 omega uh, by the poincare inequality so now what about the right hand side so mod integral omega fv is less than equal to mod f 0 omega mod v 0 omega which is less than equal to mod f 0 omega norm v 1 omega so that is that is fine and then you have about integral on omega grad u tilde grad v dx okay this is less than or equal to c uh, mod grad u tilde mod u tilde 1 omega mod v 1 omega which is less than or equal to c time is norm u tilde 1 omega mod v 1 omega so this is less than c times mod f 0 omega mod v 1 omega okay and uh, norm u is less than or equal to some c times norm g half gamma mod v 1 omega okay so therefore RHS defines a continuous linear functional on H10 of omega and so there exists a unique W in H10 of omega solution by lax milgram and of course so this implies that u can be written as w plus u tilde solution weak solution of the uh, inhomogeneous problem okay so that is fine now what about uniqueness now given u tilde w is unique that's all we know but we want to know if there's a unique solution suppose you have two unique two solutions two possible if possible two solutions two weak solutions so that means u1 u2 such that gamma not u1 equals gamma not u2 equals g and integral grad u1 grad b equals integral fv i grad ui grad v equals integral fv dx on omega for every v in h10 omega okay so this implies that integral on omega grad u1 minus u2 grad v equal to 0 for every v in h10 omega and since gamma not u1 equals gamma not u2 we have gamma not u1 equals gamma not u2 implies u1 minus u2 itself is in h10 of omega and therefore this implies so if you put v equals u1 minus u2 as a test function you get mod grad u1 minus u2 square integral on omega equal to 0 that means mod u1 minus u2 1 omega equal to 0 and by Poincare's inequality this implies that u1 equal to u2 so the solution is unique okay now what about the continuous dependence on the data So, u depends continuously 
on the data. So we have that integral grad w grad v dx equals integral f v dx on omega minus integral omega grad u tilde grad w dx uh, grad uh, v sorry. Okay, now we put v equals w. So you get mod w square 1 omega equals is therefore less than equal to mod f 0 omega and mod v 0 omega which I am going to say mod c mod w uh, 1 omega f v equals w and then uh, plus mod u tilde 1 omega mod w 1 omega okay and mod u tilde 1 omega we already saw that this was less than equal to c mod f 0 omega plus mod g half norm g half gamma times mod w 1 omega okay and therefore you have that mod w 1 omega is less than equal to c times mod f 0 omega plus mod norm g half gamma okay so this shows that uh, it is continuously dependent on the data okay so and you have that norm u 1 omega is less than equal to uh, u is equal to w plus u tilde and therefore norm u uh, 1 omega is less than equal to norm u norm w 1 omega plus norm u tilde 1 omega which is less than equal to c times mod w 1 omega by the Poincare inequality because w is in h1 0 okay. So we use Poincare inequality 1 again plus norm u tilde 1 omega and that is less than equal to by all that we have seen before norm u tilde is already less than norm g half gamma that is the right inverse we took and w we have just calculated so the whole thing is like by some constant f0 omega plus norm g half gamma. So we have there exists a unique solution and it is continuously dependent on data. So remark existence and uniqueness of solution plus continuous dependence on data. So this is called well post problem in the sense of Adamar. Okay, so a well post problem means it will have a solution, solution will be unique and the solution will depend continuously on the data. These are the three characteristics of a well post problem. Okay, so the Dirichlet problem homogeneous there is no that straightforward we have already seen in the abstract setting that the mapping G which maps the solution to the uh, F to the solution is a continuous operator and therefore the, in the, the homogeneous case we had no difficulty and in the inhomogeneous case we have shown that there exists a unique solution which depends continuously on the data. So our next thing is to look at other uh, second order elliptic operators which are not necessarily the Laplacian. So we want to know what is the situation in those cases.